Blau und Weiß sein Leben lang. Welcome to Shock America, the only English language podcast for Schalke out there in the universe. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. This is episode 157 of Shock America. Joining me as always, co-host Jack Mangan. Happy Victory Monday. Happy Victory Monday, sir. Just yeah. a uh, just a short break from those with that result in Bremen last week. Uh, yeah. But big result, much needed result against Sandhausen in the context of what was a pretty insane uh, weekend. Understatement. Uh, roller coaster <laughs> of emotions, even within the 90 minutes, because multiple games were going on yes. uh, simultaneously. So I'm sure we'll get into all of that. But uh, how are you holding up after that? We came out on the right end of it, of course. But <laughs> yes. uh, it was pretty wild there for a bit. Un- that It is Probably the craziest Friday in football in terms I've ever witnessed in my life. And it, it came out in the good end for us. But uh, I'm good. I recovered the rest of the weekend. I uh, got a lot of stuff done. But uh, the weekend started off very well because of this Friday. And how was your weekend? Yeah, absolutely. Back to the top of the table uh, with, a, with a couple points as a cushion. Not mathematically sealed yet. But um, once again, kind of in a position to control our destiny. And it, yeah. that's all you can ask for. I mean, the, the way the results ended up uh going this weekend for the most part uh you know couldn't have gotten much better so um yeah it's all there man here all we go there. final you know down to the wire two games left and we'll start off with a bit of breaking news because there's two games left but that could be delayed uh and the reason is that because St. Pauli have had 10 players test positive for COVID-19 and the rules state you need to have 15 eligible players on the field or you have to reschedule the match so to be determined if they're going to have 15 eligible players, I mean, the question is, if they do get 15 players, are they going to be the top level players for them? Probably not. And so you start thinking about, is that fair for them? Is it not? Where do you, where do you sit on this kind of, on this topic when it comes to this situation uh, in, in terms of footballing? Yeah, I, maybe you're going to call me soft and, and fair enough if you do. Uh, but personally i mean i feel like if i don't know who the, who the players are that are affected by st Pauli and how important they are but like gotcha. if st Pauli would have some sort of a significant portion of their starting 11 miss the game because of uh you know a global pandemic that's kind of out of everyone's control and that ultimately negative effects negatively affects their their promotion bid i personally would feel bad for them because the same thing could happen to us yeah or like any other team like it could just easily be us having 10 players out with covid um and so i feel bad so um i don't know i mean it, it is what it is but i it, Hopefully they're in a decent enough sp- spot within the squad that they feel comfortable playing the match, and it's not like some big storyline hanging over it. Yeah, no, no. Ultimately, the player safety is number one, number one, right? And you want to make sure hopefully everyone is as well and and they, they recover quickly from this. Um, so where I stand on it is I don't have remorse for. It. I, I feel for the players. I I do for St. Pauli players, I should say. Um, but I've seen this in other leagues where it's affected league titles. Not just in the second division. I'm talking about top division winning league titles, and it's cost the team with like two, three games to go, and they got hit with COVID, and then they were on a hot streak, got COVID, and then they just failed the rest of the way. So I've seen this happen, and so I don't feel that bad, but I do feel sorry for them if that makes sense. Um, obviously, well, if it was not, I'd feel differently, probably. Yeah, and luckily for us, I think St. Pauli's in what fifth at the moment, so it's yeah. not as if it's like a like a one and two battle. They've dropped down. Yeah. Um, so it, that makes it slightly easier, I guess, potentially. But uh, yeah, still an unfortunate situation for them. Yes. I don't think I come on the right end of it. Yeah, so we'll see. In the next couple of days, we'll find out whether they're going to have 15 eligible players or not, or we're going to have to reschedule the game. I personally don't want to see the game rescheduled, but uh, you know, I understand. I also understand the other aspect, like you're saying, is like if they don't have 15 like eligible players that are going to play, you know, uh, that are top notch players, what are you going to do, right? I, I remember last year. I guess it was last year. As Akmar in Champions League had to field a, a, a team full of their youngsters in the Champions League, no less. And they actually won that game, which is crazy enough um, against another top tier team. But, uh, you know, crazier things have happened. We'll see what happens here in the next couple of days. But, you know, we got a long like, way like to team go. Team on are playing in the Bernabeu. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, Jake asks, how would rescheduling work? Would it have to be done before the final weekend? Oh, that's a good question. I I imagine so because every game is going to be played at the same time at the end. So there might have to be short, uh, short week. Like that would Wednesday. suck. That would, hurt. that would like negatively hurt us. Like, yeah. If that yeah. ends up being the case, then never mind. They have to deal with COVID. I don't want us to be, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Cause if it's a yeah. short week, that would not 
be cool for us. Um, and then again, if it if it has to be rescheduled to the week after the last weekend, that's not fair to the other teams that are involved as well, right? So that's I would guess because of that aspect, it would be a short week for Schalke, and that would suck. But I don't know. I don't know. And I hope someone is listening. Maybe Derek Ray's listening. He could tell us, right? <laughs> but yeah. I don't honestly know. I don't honestly know. That's a good question. I'm sure this is how Derek Ray spends his Monday nights. Well, of course. Of course. Everyone, everyone, right? Everyone should be. Every fight the league or German football fan should be listening to us every Monday night, Sun Victory Monday podcast. But uh, yeah, before we get to the chaos that was Friday, because there's a lot of it. Uh, let's get into the game because there yeah. was it was a it was an interesting game. Uh, let's get to the starting lineups in this one because it was tinkered with, right? Uh, probably by necessity more than anything. But uh, Frazzle and goal as he always is. Uh, back four of Vinheim, Itakura, Kaminsky, and Chalanolu. Midfield of Latza, Flick with Cherlinov, Bulter, and Salazar. Of course, led by our now 27 goal scorer Simon Taroda. Thoughts on the lineup? Yeah, so was it was it Malik Chow and Kaminsky and then Ida Kura in midfield last week? Yes. If I remember yes. correctly, yeah. Yes. So um yeah, so I mean we haven't seen Ida Kura in the center back position for several weeks running now. He's kind of been in that midfield position for a bit. So that's an interesting yeah. pairing. I don't know if we've seen the two of them together in a back four yet. No, no. Um anyway, yeah, and then Vinheim being healthy and just getting the run is interesting to me. Um, maybe he's in better form, better shape than like Aiden, for example, or maybe he was always favored over Aiden, but like, you know, Aiden's kind of come on as a sub the last two games. So it looks like he's been available for selection potentially. Yeah. So it, will, it looks like Vinheim's really given that opportunity right now. Um, you know, China Logo, like he's been doing fine for the most yeah. part, you know, replacing Owen. Like I haven't had much of an issue with him for the most part. Um, and then that flick lots of pairing. Um, it's interesting to see because sometimes it's been like, you know, like uh, uh, Paulson in there with one of the two of them. Um, but uh, I thought both of them were, were pretty solid in this game um, and, and did did fine. And then I, I did you see this more of like the two, the four, two, three, one or like the four, two, two, two? Because I kind of saw it as more of the latter. Yeah, it's probably four, um, two, two, two lately. The last couple of weeks, at least, I think it's been like that. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know. Personally, good to see Troll enough. Yeah. I, I think he's, he you know, he, he's bright. And and was again in this performance. Um, even it's even if it's not always the most polished, he just adds a lot of energy. Um, and that can be useful in certain matches for sure. Yeah. Uh we'll, we'll talk about the energy that he brought with Diekmeyer uh at the end of the game there. But uh yeah, it's an interesting lineup for sure. I mean, I guess Tiaug is injured. I didn't catch the 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 the, the 311 on that. Uh same thing with Sane. I think he might be recovering from from injury or something. So Itakuri gets a start in this one. And then, you know, we both talked about Flick and Latza. Like, that was an interesting pairing for us. You know, you could have gone so many different ways with this. Um, but, hey, it, it ultimately, it worked okay. It, it worked fine, I think. Um, and the lineup in general worked fine. Cherlinov pretty much put a good 90 in or whatever it was in 88 minutes. Salazar had a good shift. Bolter and Torda did their, their thing. Um, and you can't argue about – Kaminsky had a, was pivotal, had a big big play on one of the goals. Um, or one of the potential goals, I should say, one of the chances. Uh, Chalonolo was decent, and, and Itakor and Binheim did their things, and Frazel, you know, didn't get much to do, but, you know, he was there. Actually, he, he provided almost a hockey assist on, on the game-winning goal uh, of sorts. Uh, but we'll, It's true. Yeah, it's kind of like a long ball, wasn't it, to start from the yeah, kick clearance? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, – and the lineup, real quick for, for Sandhausen, uh, Druviz and goal with uh, – Okoroyo, uh, Zirov, Dumich, and Diekmeyer, the captain, uh, Zenga, and the Tribul in the midfield holding pivot roles with uh, Berneke, Bachman, and Sufert with uh, Testerot, who I uh, think he may have scored in the first time around against him. Maybe not. I, don't, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, it was an okay lineup. The big thing with Sennhausen, I think, is that they've been hot as of late. Uh, they were in the relegation zone and fighting for their lives. So as sometimes happens, these teams get hot and they were taking down some teams along the way. and. Um, this game was definitely diff more difficult than if you looked at just the table standings, right? I think Sennhausen certainly gave us more of a challenge in terms of how close the score was uh, than if you just looked at the table and say, oh, we're at top of the table, they're at the bottom, it should be a cakewalk, right? Yeah, yeah, I would certainly agree with that. Um, as you said, they've been in better form recently. Um, they've been able to put in good performances against against good teams in, this, in the second division. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's a road fixture. Uh, Luckily, I think our traveling support was phenomenal. Once again, that's been a theme recently. Oh it's God. been really coming through on the broadcast and everything. So that's that helps. There was a significant Schalke contingent 
uh, there. But yeah, certainly a tricky fixture uh, to end the year, one of many. Um, and yeah, as you said, not just a, a reflection necessarily of the table standings. Um, you know, form comes in these things occasionally. So outside of the stadium, because that's the obvious that it's not Velton's Arena. I mean, you would have not guessed it was not a home game. 10,000 traveling fans, amazing in this game. I mean, you'd heard them over the home crowd. Uh, it was unreal support that they had, and they they proved pivotal in those last two goals or the two goals that we scored, especially the last one. I mean, they were rocking in this game. Uh, they should get you know a secondary man of the match award for that kind of performance. No, I mean, and you and I have been shouting it out every every week when we're seeing it because yeah, it's like I said, it's really coming through on the broadcast. Um, because obviously we didn't went out on the ground over there and everything, but you can you can really tell that on on some of these road fixtures, it's it's the Schalke um section of the crowd that's actually making the lion's share of the noise. Lots of friends of the podcast are out in those games too, yes, uh, so it's, it's pretty true. awesome to see watching their videos and stuff like that and their pictures. So, uh, really, uh, kudos to them for sure. But uh, back to the game and um, first half was, you know, I want to say the majority of the game, but f- you know, just focusing on the first half, I thought it was pretty much one way traffic. I don't think Frazzle was really even challenged at all in that first half. We had a couple good opportunities. It was a play where Kaminsky kind of set up. Uh, Tarota and then Bulter and Salazar around the 19th minute and then in the 25th Salazar from distance got a good shot off uh, but we were pretty much had the be- we had, well we had the best opportunities in that first half it was one way traffic but Sandhausen were bending but not breaking and we've been talking about this all season long where like there's portions of the season where we've dominated or looked like we dominated but we can't get any goals in and it's like this happened in the first half and it's 0-0 yeah um I guess the way I would, what'd you see? How'd you see it? Yeah, I, I, I guess the way I would look at the first half was that we had an, we had a fairly easy time getting it into the final third or getting it into the box, and then it, just all of our shots would get blocked, um, yeah. or you know, within a few moments into its flight, would run into traffic, and so it, we just couldn't get clean looks to finish a lot of these things off, and and not maybe the most clear cut touches. So we were, yeah, we were kind of danger adjacent. I feel like for a lot of <laughs> a lot of the first half um but still yeah controlling i think the game for the most part and, and limiting set houses and i think that was the case for you know the full 90 minutes for the most part um not that they didn't have chances but yeah i felt relatively comfortable it was just a matter of um you know combining in the right way and getting a good finish on frame i mean i i didn't see any statistics in that first half but i don't know if they even had a shot on, the, on target they had say some shots but lots of shots were high and wide really high and wide uh and so nothing really threatened frazzle in this game i don't think it was until late in the second half that frazzle even touched the ball it seemed like uh, other than passes from, the, from his own defenders so uh zero zero first half and it's obviously worrying because other games are going live and it's great because uh, uh kreutzer there's a shot i don't know what time of the game it was but kreutzer was watching the other games going live right next to him he had a tv so they're obviously paying attention to what's going on in the other games it's obviously tense situation zero zero you know, everything's on the line. This this stage of the season, everybody has to win, at least at the top of the table. And obviously, Sennhausen are trying to win. They're trying to survive uh, the Bundesliga, or fight the Liga. Uh, so it's getting tense, getting tense. Uh, and then finally, um, Chirlinov, a guy who we said that had a pretty good pretty good year. I don't remember who had the initial pass, uh, but it, it, it pass comes through the middle, kind of crosses through the box. Bolter lets it go. Chirlinov like one times it hits off the post, comes out. Tarota man on the spot. Everyone thought Bolter scored. I mean, even Schalke's account on Twitter thought Bolter scored because Bolter celebrated like he scored. Uh, the camera's following Bolter around. So even the announcer, the Schalke props to the Schalke announcer on Schalke TV. He was awesome. Oh, game. that that was a great call. Yeah, yeah, like he yeah. was amazing. And the, and the second, which we'll get to in a minute, but yeah, it was just that was pretty yeah. pretty great. Uh, pretty he great was television. Screaming when it was fouls and all. I love this guy. But uh, nonetheless, Toroto scores the goal. Everyone was like, "Oh, yeah, we messed up." But uh, Johnny in the spot, Toroto as he always is. I mean, it was just a great play and Turlinoff, great IQ to take a shot one timer and then, like you said, Bolter for leaving it going. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was maybe Flick that was taking the ball to pitch initially, and I think it was Adrizi who had just come on Um, that gets he the was, ball played to him from Flick. Effect. And yeah, he picked out that pass, which was pretty incisive from like kind of the right-hand side of the pitch on the ground, like to the top area of the box, which I mean, pretty aggressive pass and yeah. executed well. And I don't know if, you know, Trillinoff called Bolter off of that or if that was entirely Bolter's design. 
Um, but dummies it, falls right into the space, and, and Trilinov gets good curl on it. Keeper makes a save, bounces to the post, and and Tirada does Tirada things and is there for the rebound. Uh, first guy there. I mean, that's the thing is that he can score in so many variety of ways. Oh my you know, gosh, it's it's yeah. the heads, it's the feet, it's you know, um, solo efforts, it's cleanup efforts where he's poaching, you know, that kind of stuff. He's just really the complete striker, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a great build-up. Like I said, great pass from Idrizi. Great shot attempt from Tronoff. He's unlucky not to score that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the the best scorer in the league is is continuing to add to that. Talent. There's a chance he could hit 30. I mean, it's not it's out of the question. It's not out of the realm. Yeah. No, it's not out of the realm. Um, you're right about Idrizi because he came on and Tronoff automatically shifted to the left side from the right side. Uh, and Idrizi was instant impact as soon as he came on. I mean, immediately on the ball all the time, making those spots, those uh, those passes and stuff. And you said that great pass across that eventually found Trelonov for the shot. Um, so one nothing there. It's like 72nd minute there. We're feeling good about ourselves. But it's still tense, right? It's only one goal advantage here. And to this point, Sandhausen really hasn't done anything in terms of a threat in our goal. Um, I think they maybe had one that Frost got, but it wasn't even, it wasn't even that dangerous of a shot. Sure enough, their first real great opportunity, kind of off of like a set play, what we saw Verda Bremen do, uh, they score. 83rd minute, it's 1-1 all of a sudden. It was a, it came off a corner kick, went out back, and they kind of played a back pass, tricking everybody. Smart play by, I don't know if it was Testerode or who it was, Bachman maybe, headed back across the goal, which we, we usually do. Uh, and and Diekmeyer scores the goal, 83rd, and we're like, oh, here we go, because we... We give up a goal, and goals happen in every other game that is important to our league. And so getting really crazy at that point. Was about to be on mute there for a second. I caught myself. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and it was an unfortunate play because the moment that, that allowed them to get that corner kick was actually just kind of like a BS random uh, counterattack after we were in their box having yeah. like a halfway decent opportunity and they somehow ended up getting it all the way upfield and out for the corner. Um, they were the most dangerous. I felt like all game from, from wide areas with yeah. their wide delivery. They didn't create a whole lot else beyond that. And so I thought it was fitting that it was like, you know, uh, kind of a broken play off a corner that ends up getting cycled out back wide played. And then as you said, yeah, it's, it's kind of like back to the edge of the box sort of. And um, Instead of going for goalie, kind of like heads it back towards uh, where all the traffic is, and, and Deke Meyer's there. He was probably their best player on the night, honestly. He was yeah. up there, certainly. Not a whole lot of guys impressed me, but he was pretty good for most of the game. Um, and, uh, you yeah. know, it's a good finish from him, actually. Like, yeah. like I mean, oh, he really he gets it high, he gets it up in the roof of the net, you know, to kind of take the keeper out of the equation to some extent. Yeah. Um, I think maybe you could say Itakura fell asleep a little bit and didn't kind of like stick on his man as he as he kind of made that move yeah. um but uh yeah i don't know it's it, like i said it's a, it's a nice clever header and the guy ultimately had good space could finish i don't really want to blame anybody in particular too much for it yeah cop ball watching there it the was but uh yeah you know it's fitting i guess that diekmeyer scored uh so moments before he scored he had taken sherlin off out and it should have been a yellow our lovely commentator on shaka tv was screaming like how is that not a yellow how is that not a uh, and anyway, the Deke Myers was being a pest all game long because he was playing really well. Um, and then I was going as soon as he scores the goal, and the shock announcer is like, Of course, it's Deke Meyer. Of course, of course, he's gonna be the one score. He was like you mentioned, he was one of the better players on the team. Um, so game continues on, and Shaka the game really gets wide open at this point because Shaka going for the win at this point, they know how important a win is. Um, uh, so we started seeing back and forth almost. They didn't really have dangerous opportunities, but it was still back and forth. Um and a great play. We talked about Diekmeyer and Cherlinoff, you know, earlier. A play again where someone leads a pass to Cherlinoff. Diekmeyer tries to take him out again. Cherlinoff out jumps him and starts yelling in his face, like, come on, baby, come on, baby. And Diekmeyer just laughed it off. And it, it was, I mean, I love seeing that from Cherlinoff. He was feisty all game long. Um, and then we get into the end of the game where somehow the ball ends up getting to Frazzle. I think it might have been a goal kick or something. I don't know what happened. He kicks it deep. Some bounces go its way. Um so he hits it. Idrizi actually blocks the, the 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 clearance attempt from Sandhausen. Goes to Cherlinov, I think. Cherlinov gives it back to Idrizi. Idrizi does some footwork, slides it back into the box, and you don't see what happens because there's all these bodies there. And then the ball goes in the net. And really, what it was is Taroto with his footwork find a way. That wasn't his prettiest goal by any stretch, but he scores, and everyone went nuts. It looked like a home game. The announcer, the crowd. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's pure like stoppage time shit house, route one football, you know, like the long ball, in, you know, to forward areas. It kind of gets bounced around a couple of times, ultimately churning off plays to Reed like you said, and he's trying to save it from the end line and, and finds a way to cut it back and avoid the keeper who was like right in the there. way of that cutback angle. And he got it around it and it actually caught, I think, Toronto by surprise. He got caught like in between his legs because um, he was maybe caught like between strides or something and he somehow sorted out his feet and had the angle and there wasn't anybody sitting like directly on the near post he had like two defenders around him and they just he, like i don't know it. yeah <laughs> like, i mean yeah i mean you kind of feel for sandhausen in that one it's just such a scrappy goal for us to score yeah. but once again Toronto just like in the right places at the right times like getting near post getting the angle and, and yeah. you know having the physicality and you know the technical ability despite his size as well to, to, to finish it off and get in the net so huge and then he made like just the funny like sprint all the way to the corner <laughs> this is how he runs like... yeah dude it was so funny um and uh i mean yeah schroeder was going crazy Buyo was going crazy uh oh uh yeah the crowd the crowd i mean they could think of something traveling support there was a huge huge number of of, of shock supporters over in that corner it was uh it was, it was a great moment sides, too. Was the whole great call was on the tv uh and yes. just huge huge in the context of the season i mean like obviously like, as we said san has been playing better recently isn't the Sandhausen of you know, maybe the first time we played them this season yeah. uh but even so like you know with san paulo coming up next nuremberg after that uh you know san the one you absolutely need to get the three points from yes. um i think we deserved it on you know sort of the balance of the game but obviously weren't putting it away and not really really kind of turning the screw and uh they gave them a chance they came back into it late and we found a way to kind of BS it with Toronto and get it through. But uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge goal. I mean, he scored a lot of them this yeah. season and he, that wasn't the cleanest, but it was maybe the most important. He, despite what happens this year with promotion, who gets promoted and whatnot, Timoto, Timoto, <laughs> Tarota might be the MVP of the season. I mean, 27 goals, possibly hit 30 goals by the end of the season. Unreal what this guy is. Everyone's like, this guy's washed up. And someone made a comment on our YouTube page. I think uh, Tony, Tony W or whatever. Uh, he was saying, like, you know, Hamburger probably kicking themselves and getting rid of Toronto last year, and he comes back this year. And he could have really been the reason they got promoted, uh, if not for him. You know, 27 goals. Unreal, this guy. He is the the fight the league of Lewandowski. And I, I would love to see what he can do one more time in the in the Bundesliga to get a chance and, you know, see if he can end his career on a high note, you know. But we'll, we'll see, really. Uh, but the crazy thing about all this was – other games were taking place at the same time, yes. in particular, Ver Bremen against Holstein Kiel, mm -hmm. St. Pauli and Nuremberg are next to opponents. Uh, and there's some other matches going on too that didn't really infect us. But yeah, at one point, at one point, Verder wasn't first, another point, St. Pauli wasn't first. It was because the roles kept the results kept changing throughout the game. At uh, one point, St. Pauli was up one nothing. Verder was up two nothing. Then they were down three two. Yeah, and then it looked like St. Pauli's in first, and we score. Oh my god! Yeah, it was such a roller coaster of the day because yeah, Verder jumped out to an early two two nil lead in the first half. So that was before we had scored, and so they were looking, you know, very very in control. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> two baby. two own goals as as part of that, but Holston Keel come all the way back. Wow! And end up taking uh and and beating them to to knock them off, which was huge. And then St. Pauli get a get a penalty. Um, I think after we scored our first goal, maybe yeah. kind of yeah. in terms of the time relation there. Um, and then fortunately, uh, Nuremberg take one back right at the end. Really well taken goal, by the way, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really, really nifty. Uh, and then, of course, our our uh, stoppage time on top of that. But yeah, I mean, it was just like three results that were going our way, then not going away, then going our way back again. It was it was crazy to watch. And um, yeah. the only one that really didn't go our way was Darmstadt picking up six goals. Wow. Um, which which hurts the goal difference. Six nil win over over Al. Yeah. That was the only bad one. But I mean, San Paul is huge, and of course, Verder Bremen, and you got to be happy with it overall. It was it was crazy Friday. It was a crazy Friday, no doubt about it. And um, you know, I want to say that the game for Verder was a trap game, but it wasn't because they were up two nothing and comfortable. And all of a sudden, Holson Kiel come roaring back, and they kind of like left their foot off the gas after they were up two nothing. So that you know that was a crazy result and again Nuremberg, our friends come back and and get the draw to death uh and we end up being in first place at the end of all of oh at least end of friday uh and like you said at that point it looked good because we were at 59 verter on 57 and saint Pauli at 54 so we had a five point cushion on third place which was great because all we need is pretty much a draw and we're we're in unfortunately like you said darmstadt won six nothing at eisenberg owl um, not only jumping into second place over Verde Bremen because of goal differential, probably head to head, uh, but 
now it's two points between us and third place. And Darmstadt and Werder Bremen have two softer opponents. I say softer, not weak, softer opponents. And we got two hard ones in St. Pauli and Nuremberg. Um, it ain't over yet. It's going to be a dogfight to the end here, Jack. Um, of course, it had to end this way, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'd rather be in first place with a two-point cushion than be, you know, where, where Darmstadt or, or Werder Bremen are. Um, but, uh, yeah, not mathematically sealed yet. And if we don't, you know, take care of business, um, you know, we could this could all crumble, you know, very quickly in the space of the next couple of weeks here. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll have to see what happens with with the uh, the COVID situation for St. Pauli, um, yeah. especially as we mentioned. Yeah, we don't know what the schedule is going to look like. If for some reason that gets pushed back into like, you know, mid next week, like a Tuesday game or something, that would Not be ideal. highly unfortunate. We'd be on short rest for Nuremberg, whatever it is. Um, yeah, who knows? But you have you have to feel optimistic. Like we've we've yeah. we've done about as well as we could have down the stretch, all things considered. Um, we're in the position we need to be in. It's just you know anything can happen in the final two games, and who has enough to, to to drag it over the line? And I I hope it's us. I think it's us. I believe in the squad. Um, I believe in the talent on the squad. But uh, you know, like you said, good opponents. Good opponents. Then I think a goal and a draw gets us through. But you know. We gotta hope that Darmstadt or Verder slip up again. We need, you know, we, we need that just to help us out just anymore. But we gotta everything is in our destiny at the moment. Everything's in our hands, so it's up to us. You know, if we if we get the results we need, it doesn't matter what they do because we're in. Uh, but let's see what happens. St. Pauli is the big one here on Saturday at afternoon, uh, the marquee game, which I think is gonna be on ESPN Plus. Um, it should be. Can you <laughs> right? imagine if it wasn't? Two of the fan favorites, not on ESPN Plus in this time of the year, right? Um, so yeah, it, it's it's gonna be crazy here. I mean, I don't know what to think. Um, <laughs> Jake mentioned the uh, post game interview with Tarota screaming his funny. ass off after the goal, and it is like sound like a little high school kid. Like, ah, ah, couldn't speak at all. His, his voice was entirely gone, and he kept trying to talk, and had to keep stopping because he was like, hey, "Should I?" <laughs> Uh, yeah, that actually was shockingly funny. I was surprised at how hard I laughed. I kept seeing everyone like retweet that, yeah. and I didn't watch it for the first like five or six times it came across like my feet. I'm like, all right, everyone's talking about this. I have to give this a chance. And yeah, it's it pretty funny. But hey, you love you love to see the emotion, how much it means to everybody. It's it's been great. Yeah, Jake says uh, two points gets us third place. Four points uh, likely gets us second, and of course six points gets the win league. Yeah, uh, and like we've been saying this whole time, we don't want third place. Third place gets you the oh, Bundesliga not. club in a playoff game in a two game playoff. I don't want that. I don't want that. I would rather be first or second. Sure, the champion in the second division is nice, but top two spot is all I want right now. Get promoted automatically and then not to deal with the playoff. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's not over just yet. Uh, and, and all this madness when St. Pauli had a, a, a couple minutes in top spot, now they're in fifth spot because both Darmstadt won big time and Hamburg won also. So Hamburg's in fourth at the moment. So, yeah, it's um, it's chaotic, man. This fight the league, it does not disappoint. It really doesn't. We said this last year before coming in, and it just it lived up to the hype. It, it, it does. Um, I mean, I just want to – we got to have our friends at this Fight the League podcast on here, uh, both Ava and Matt. And yeah, because uh, what a league, what a league, what a super league here. So, um, what other news has gone on that we need to talk about? Um, quick shout out to uh, to Freiburg for refusing to uh, have their yes. uh, their branding partnered with any Red Bull branding on like a dual scarf. Um, that's really petty, but I think it's hilarious and I love it. Yeah, um, I just I really enjoyed that personally. And every uh, German team is going to support them 100%. <laughs> Everyone, it actually, uh, it sparked the, uh, the like, how do we feel about the the dual scarf dialogue? Which it was just something I didn't think we were gonna we were gonna see. But there's a lot of strong takes about like those being some sort of like perverse abomination. The fact that you could have like you know some sort of multi purpose or like double sided uh, thing there. So I was wondering what your opinions on that were because that was uh, getting pretty heated on Twitter there for a bit. I don't have any, but you know, if it's like, no, I mean. If it's like a World Cup game or something, or I don't know, it's as like very, a neutral, you mean? Like I don't know, like yeah, if yeah. it's very few instances where I think it'd be a good idea. I mean, if you're not playing anyone who's even close to being a rival or in the same league, like it's like a Champions League final, I can see as a memorabilia type thing. If it was like something. it was, 
if it was a Revere Derby and it was like a like a half Dortmund, half Schalke, yeah. Scar- like yeah, like why would you buy that? Like no. yeah, exactly. It could it could be. I mean, only what only time it'd be acceptable if it was Nuremberg and us. That's the only time it's acceptable. I mean, it could be like a Freiburg and I'm like, I don't want to see that. I don't want Freiburg. You know, I get a I get a scarf of Freiburg or whomever it is, as opposed to a half and half. Like I don't want that um, personally. That's just me. So these are the important questions. It is. Got, got to bring it up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, I feel like there was something else news wise, but we talked about it already. I don't think so. Chernov, I thought I saw some quote that was saying that he was suggesting that he wants to stay at Schalke into the future. Um, I don't know if that was confirmed or anything, but I saw some sort of quotation from him. That would um, be good. That yeah, be so that's good. nice to see. He was, you know, banging the badge a couple times in the course yeah. of the game against Sandhausen. Um, and yeah, great performance from him once again. Great energy. He seems to be one of those players, Trilinov, that's um, sort of immune to the emotional ebbs and flows within like a soccer game. Like sometimes like you know, the team will be kind of in a lull and they will be a little bit low energy and he just seems to be doing like whatever he feels like doing. Like whatever. Up, and but he can, won't go down. Yeah. It just, yeah. So that, that tends to, I feel like actually have its benefits at times. Um, yeah. So like, even if the rest of the team is kind of in a bad moment, if the ball gets into Trilinov area, you can guarantee that he's going to be doing something to like create a spark at a, you know, even if he's uh, maybe not the most efficient at times. Yeah, and you know we've talked all season long about Blendy Adrizi and how he should be one of the starters because of the play he's done. But honestly, his his performances off the bench as of late have been really timely, especially this game on Friday where he was just a spark plug, came on an instant impact, really kind of started both goals um, or or as a cause of both goals. So I mean, he's doing really well there. It's it's gonna be interesting to see what. Um, Buyo does with the with the lineup because he's been tinkering here and there, so mostly out of necessity. But we don't know how healthy Tiao's going to be, Asane, the rest of these guys. Um, you know what does he do? It's a big game against St. Pauli, who are a dangerous team. So here's a here's an interesting question for you. At least I think it's interesting. Okay, let's say that um, Malik Shaw is unavailable for one of the next two matches, and you have Kaminsky, Itakura, and Salif Sane, who are all 100 fit. Do you? Play Salif Sane in a back two to get Ida Curry in central midfield, or do you say I want no part of Salif Sane in the final two games, given how little he's been involved in the squad, you know, over the entire course of the season? And I, you know, I'll roll with a lots of flick midfield again. I'll do a Paulson, you know, whatever, and I'll keep Sane, you know, on the bench. Maybe you sub him on the 90th minute for the long balls when he's in the box. Like I was just interested in your in your perspective on that because ostensibly, like going into the season, Sane is our best center back. <laughs> was kind of the conversation, right? Or like close yeah. to it. Or, yeah. yeah. And, and now it's like, I'm questioning whether or not you'd even give him, give him the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dirk says, leave Sane out. So my opinion is this. I, I mean, I, we both agreed and we've said him all time, all throughout the season that Sane is arguably one of our best players, definitely in the defensive side, but you know, he's also one of the most talented guys on our team. With that said, I don't want him in that starting lineup, not because I don't like him, because, like you said, he hasn't played that much lately, and Kaminsky's been working his ass off. He got a, you know, he's been doing really good plays defensively. He's been fairly solid. Itakura is good no matter where you put him. Um, and so I know, I know, I at this point of the season, I trust Itakura and Kaminsky more than I would Sane, just because Sane might have some rust in him. Um, and so I would rather go with Itakura and Kaminsky, and then roll with a flick. Lots of or Paulson, some kind of one of those three guys in the two spots there. Um, yeah, I just not and nothing against Sane. I, I want him on the team, but at this point in the season, with the with everything on the line, I got to go with those two guys first and let bring Sane off the bench if one of them gets injured. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's an interesting one. Yeah, I feel like if if I saw that Sane was in the starting lineup, like would I be confident or would I be like, uh? And I feel like if I'm being honest, I'd be like kind of sketched out by it you know what i mean yeah i just don't know if i have um the belief and the trust in him this season in the context of the season that i do with everybody else i mean and they've certainly proved it and earned it, that trust you know over the course of um the campaign even kaminsky who i think we've said is kind of like maybe um you know third choice to some extent between him and Kerr and Chiao. i mean but like kaminsky's been super solid and at times excellent actually not just solid but at times very good um so yeah, interesting, uh, interesting problems. But the thing is, most people are fit now. Yeah. Last couple of games, almost everyone should be available. Luckily, Obian wasn't murdered 
um, right yep. as he was getting healthy again, that red card challenge late in the game. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, he looks to be okay. That was that was sketchy too, but uh, yeah. even he's back potentially. So yeah, uh, Eric says no Sane right now. If we're up two nothing in the 80th minute, sub him on. <laughs> okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Or if you need to go late, we need another striker. He's on. He's absolutely more than qualified to do that. We've seen that before. Um, and Med Hunter asked about the Chirlin off and, and uh, Deke Meyer situation. We talked about that earlier. You love the passion from and emotion from uh, Chirlin off. As we said, you know, he's an even keel kind of player who has a tendency to go bring his emotion up, but he doesn't really bring it down, which is good to see as opposed to some other players. Um, yeah, overall, decent game. Um, don't have statistics in front of me, but I mean, it from an optics point of view, Sennhausen didn't do much. And I expect St. Pauli to do a lot more depending on what their lineup is, right? That's the big elephant in the room right now. They got 10 players with COVID positive. Who's going to show up? Is it going to be like, uh, a bunch of guys from the reserves or is it going to be delayed? If it gets rescheduled, that will be very much against us because we have two difficult games within, I would imagine, four days because I doubt they're going to move that St. Pauli match after the end of the season yeah um so uh, i'm hoping that the game does get played on saturday as it's supposed to hopefully they have you know their guys with, with them and hopefully everyone comes out okay but you know i you cannot this late into the season you cannot reschedule games it just it would affect shaka too much and if and if somehow they got missed promotion there would be legal stuff going through the roof hmm. I, I would imagine yeah i mean anyway Sandhausen result is huge. Imagine if we had not gotten that result and then suddenly we're looking at a must win against St. Pauli who had been the best team in the second division for much of the season. Most, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, this does so much, I think psychologically for us as well, uh, just to be, you know, on top with a couple games to go a little bit more cushion to, you know, to potentially survive a, a you know, a misstep or whatever. Um, it's six of the last seven men who would have thought, not me, yeah. but uh, you know, yeah. in Buyo we trust, I guess. I, I yeah. love, I love the combo of him and and you know Schroeder and Azamo on the side. It's it's been great. So, uh, the last note, Schroeder. We've talked enough about him this year, and we love him to death. But he's got to be the only sporting director that is on the bench, talks to the referees during the games, is playing with the you know uh, jumping on the players, doing all this. I mean, he is. It looks like he's one of the coaches. You know, uh, you know, him, you know him and Gerald Asamoa and and Kreutzer, uh, Kreutzer and and the rest uh yeah it just, certainly seems like a fun atmosphere like a fun team atmosphere a fun bench to be on but yes. i don't know yeah exactly so two games to go a big one against st Pauli, possibly this saturday we'll see watch the next watch the news the next couple of days uh but here's hoping it's saturday at 2 30 my my time 1 30 your time 1 30 yeah i can't i don't know I don't know. Like that could that. actually be like live stream watch watch territory too. It could be feasible, not a six thirty a.m. kickoff. So yeah, yeah, and if it's an ESPN Plus, even more reason to right. Exactly. Uh, but uh, here's hoping ESPN is doing watching, the, gonna have the game on. So, all right, Jack. Um, any shout outs tonight? Uh, shout out to Nuremberg for pulling that result back. Um, appreciate it. Uh, shout out to Everton. Uh, oh. Big result. Frank Lampard at the helm against his former club, Chelsea, of course. Uh, the Toffees with hope uh, here at the end as well. So rooting rooting for them. Um, yeah, that's about it. And shout out Freiburg once again, because that's funny. And I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out to the uh, the commentator on Shaka TV. Yeah, he was amazing on this last telecast. He always is good. But uh, What's his name, by the way? We should know that. I, I got to look it up. We'll have it next podcast or next stream. But uh, um, Or, yeah, you know what? If we can't watch the game, we have a reliable source uh, that I can't mention his name at the moment who is going to have the game on. He's had it every last three, four weeks at least. So, you know, we'll definitely watch it with his stream if, if nothing else. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll figure out the, the commentator's name. He is amazing. I mean, he was great on this telecast. The passion he shows just as much as Sherlin off. So, uh, all right, Jack, where can our uh, followers find you on social media? At JM Mangan, JM M A N G A N on Twitter. I'm very good. Uh, I'm at R underscore K H A R M A N. Shout out to the chat once again, whether you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, twi tw uh, Twitter, whatever, wherever you're watching us from. Uh, thank you again. If you're listening to the podcast after the fact, thank you for uh, always following us here. Um, yeah, until the next podcast comes or possible live stream, we'll catch you soon. Glukauf. Mm -hmm.